In case you didn't know, um, I am all about end time theology and science, both. So if you have theological comments or you want to talk about religion, I'm open to that, as well as talking about this scientific phenomenon that we're seeing. Tonight I wanted to talk on an extended broadcast by just going through the idea of corroboration again with you. And I want to tell you the whole story that I've seen since the beginning. Um, and I'm just going to tell you my story. So I don't believe anything unless things corroborate. If I don't get validation, if I don't get some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of a witness, some kind of some kind of way to tie things together, I'm not easily convinced. I'm a cynic. Um, it took many years for the Lord to convince me that He was real. For example, um, and I had to study all the theology that you could ever think of. But in this case, Nibiru, Planet X. You know, this whole wormwood, the whole idea that the book of Revelation talking about a star coming through our, our uh, solar system and dumping ox iron oxide dust upon the earth and poisoning many creatures and um, the chaos that ensues um, kind of always ate at me, you know. So I looked at a lot of researchers. I uh, listened to, you know, the, you know the, all, the, all the suspects, Gil Bizarre, um religious people, prophetic people. Um, people from Fatima, the Pope, uh, all kinds of people that I've listened to about this subject that all talk about it coming in. The Hopi Indians, the Sumerians, the Christians, the Muslims, everybody. Then you've got the astronomers, the Harringtons, the folks that got shot and killed or cancer or poisoned or whatever for their knowledge of this has been pretty extensive. I've watched literally hundreds of videos that talk about this. And then after I looked at all of the kind of corroborating evidence, not one piece of evidence that I've looked at would be enough to convince me and it should not be enough to convince you. And number two, you should research what I'm saying. I don't encourage you just to eat the stuff I'm saying up with no questioning. I love it when you question. I love it when you make me better um, and make the product better of what we're trying to say to the world. But um, when you look at the South Pole devastation, images from friends, I'm part of several clubs that share imagery stereo satellite imagery that I'll show you where they're actually, you know, trying to obfuscate and trying to hide the truth. Photos from webcams around the world, and, you know, and then of course the all-important all-sky all -sky cam network um, that we all enjoy very much and uh, hopefully uh, does not ever get taken down. So amazing evidence is pouring in, everybody. Um, here it is, January 17th, and just in the last month I've seen some remarkable uh, footage and imagery. This particular shot is stunning because what it does is it either shows a reflection or it shows the actual plume that's happening behind the sun. And uh, this large plume and manifestations of it are very, very difficult to hide, but you'll see them try to do it. Here's a stunning image that we just received from the uh, ISS. Um, we have folks that watch it, friends that watch it 24-7. If you don't watch it 24-7, you'll miss these images. They don't record it. Uh, but here we're seeing actually the planets that we've been looking at in this red hue, this red um, cloud, just plain as day. Uh, don't worry about this thing over here, by the way. I don't know what that is. I think it might just be something in the lens. This is what you got to worry about, man. It's these planets and this red cloud. And then there's the all-important Davis station. This is the one that kicked me in the butt and convinced me to actually get into making videos about the subject. So if you look at this particular video, you'll see that uh, when I looked down there, I said, well, it has to be visible from the South Pole. It's coming up from the, from the South. And um, I didn't expect really to see anything when I looked down there, but lo and behold, we see this large red cloud, this object, this triangle of objects um, behind the sun, which I believe we see in reflected forms and many images that we see. And then we see this large triangle that some people are trying to tell me is lens guts but when it goes when the clouds come out it cover up it covers it up so it's kind of weird and then we're starting to see this pattern emerge um, the imagery from the all sky cam network is showing three clear planets and this also this red cloud or ring that we're seeing from you know also from Davis so you're seeing that and I found this photograph from an old um, deep sky um, survey image, IR image of the whole universe. And um, I, was, I was just lucky to be able to cut this little piece out before they took it away. And uh, I do believe what this is, is an IR picture of the system that is approaching the Earth. Again, it has that same pattern, the same triangle, the blue one in the front, and then, you know, you can see, or this, 
this particular angle. I mean, it's a it's a pretty striking resemblance. And then also we see this from a handheld camera in an Earth Cam, actually in Oak Harbor, where we actually see the same pattern. Where we see this seemingly, you know, binary or moon type object, object behind it, and then the blue, what I believe to be is a uh, dwarf star. Then we have this strange, you know, triangle object, and that's been um, corroborated from Chile um, now, so we actually have, have other photographs of that starting to pour in. I just cannot keep up with the photography. If you go to the Savannah Skies Australia websites, you can uh, see it every day now. If you go there and look in the evening time uh, during the United States, uh, like approximately 7 o'clock at night central time, 8 o'clock at night central time, you, see, you can see in Savannah Skies the plume and the red, what I believe to be the dwarf star and the other planets and the same colors that we see. Um, this is just from a couple days ago, and again, I'll, I'll look at it tonight, but what was striking about this particular image was the brightness of the plume and the intensity of the plume, and also it shows this huge, you know, kind of energy reaction of some sort. Very interesting. And then we go back to the shape is, is the shape that we saw in 2014 uh, during Christmas going into the sun when they had the perspective of H1 at the opposite side, which closely matches what we've seen and what we've been t discussing. And then now this year where it's actually going away from the sun. So it's kind of interesting as we looked at this kind of triangle object that seems to be in our solar system. Oh. Then we have the iron oxide cloud phenomenon. And the clouds. The iron oxide cloud that we've been seeing, um, that we know that surrounds this system. Um, here is a, just an incredible shot of these red clouds during an evening in Florida recently. Here's the clouds that we saw from space in earlier videos where we were actually talking about the approaching red iron oxide cloud. Here's a photo I took from my own backyard showing the red um, lenticular clouds and the, the red strange clouds that are starting to come into our atmosphere. And then we have this, this strange happening in, uh, in a quiet week. I can't pronounce it, but uh, where this is what I think would happen if they didn't come trail. We'd all see, be seeing this orange skyline. And we saw these recent uh, Im images just recently that we can't explain that are just incredible. We've been seeing from Argentina in the southern hemisphere this beam of light that is just strangely just shooting in one direction. I actually saw it in our hemisphere here a couple weeks ago and photographed it from my own backyard. And then we've got almost strange dimensional weird like shields of weirdness going on where we actually are catching it now actually looking like some permeable type material that they put up in the atmosphere. They're blocking us on satellites. Um, no data, no data, no data. You can't see to, to confirm any of the, the theories that you have. And then the chemtrails are incredible during some days, some days they're not. It just depends on what's visible out there. Very weird stuff, man. I'm going to go back to this image of the <laughs> South Pole and this strange triangle and this strange thing that's going on. Just unbelievable stuff that we've seen. Now, here's the deal, man. I have no motive to lie to you. I really don't. I might make mistakes. I might look at something wrong on a scope and call something something that's not. But you know what? I'm not going to lie. I might be mistaken. The question does, though, who does have the motive to lie to you? Think about it with me a little bit. Why would anybody want to lie to you? Could it possibly be that what's at stake is so important that somebody would be wild, willing to lie, cheat, and steal to take it from you? Could it be possibly that the objective of this huge titanic struggle that we're in right now, maybe the subject of it is possibly you? Could it be that 
somebody's trying to deceive you so that you do things, say things that aren't true? Why? Why, man? I'm telling you the truth. The book of Revelation talks about this. Jesus talked about this. Many prophets talked about it. And the reason that you're getting a chance to see it before it happens, it goes down, because God clearly wants you to see the truth. So what could be his motive for telling you the truth? Well, I might have a guess for you. It might just be that he wants you to come home. All your focus on this world and all the things that you're looking at right now, all the things that are unimportant compared to this, he wants you to turn your eyes from them for a minute. Turn your eyes upon him. And he wants you to walk to him. Come to him. Run to him. He paid a big price for you to have that right.